Okay, so we we left off <coughs> excuse me, we left off this morning with the DDA algorithm. And the idea is we wanted a, a method of drawing lines on our raster array. And the raster array, as we saw this morning, was just a big array of squares. Each individual square is called a pixel. We've got to decide which pixels need illuminating. Now that's easy for us to do because we've got eyes. It's not so easy for a um, computer to do because it just deals with numbers. And that's what we're looking at today. Okay, um, the DDA algorithm is okay, but it still requires a little bit too much sort of thought for our liking. The easier we can make the algorithm, the quicker it will be. Okay. Which leads us on the Brescian's algorithm. Now this is, a, this is the daddy. This is one which is in use. It was invented back in the 60s. It's still in use today. It's not really being improved upon. Okay, so that DD, DDA I taught you, not used. Just sort of a proof of concept. Right, now Brescian's algorithm, the reason why it's so good is it uses integer only arithmetic. So we're only dealing with whole numbers. Okay, so it's able to decide which pixels are eliminated using only integer numbers. It's much more comp uh, computationally efficient if we're just dealing with integers. And how it does it is it it uses an error value. Now the error value is the distance between the pixel center and your line which you're trying to draw, your idealized image. And at each step along the driving axis, remember we step one on the x-axis each time, we have a choice between two pixels. And what we do is we examine the error between those pixels and the line, whichever the smallest we choose. So this is a very, very, very simplified sort of form, uh, simplified diagram here. Right. So here we've got a uh, six pixel raster, and the dots represent the center of each pixel. Now, this pixel here is shaded in blue, because this says, OK, we've just eliminated this pixel. That's one we decided upon. If we step one across to the right, you can see we have a choice between these two pixels. And it's fairly obvious, based upon this diagram, that this, this pixel up here would, would be the one we choose. Okay, and what we have is we have a distance between the pixel centre and the idealised line. Okay. And that distance there. The NE stands for northeast. So if we say, okay, we're dealing with this pixel, this is the pixel to the northeast, this is the pixel to the east. So if you see the sort of NE and E, D N E means the distance between the northeast pixel center and that line there, and then D E is the distance between the east pixel center and that line. Okay, and it's what we do is we choose whether we could we eliminate this pixel or this pixel depending upon the size of E, N, E, and D, D. Okay, so that's essentially what Brescian's algorithm does. Uses a really clever uh, technique, which we're gonna look at now. Okay, so how we derive Brescian's algorithm. Well, I'm gonna say X dash or X prime, Y prime are the actual coordinates of the idealized line. Okay, so along this line here, these coordinates are x dash, y dash. We can't possibly replicate that on our raster, it's too low res. Now the distance between that pixel center and the ideal, oh sorry, that pixel center and the idealized line is y dash minus yi. So it's that, the y coordinate there minus the yi coordinate there, that's a distance uh, from the east pixel center to the idealized line. Now the distance to the northeast pixel is, is just one pixel up. So instead of this pixel having a y coordinate of yi, this pixel has got a y coordinate of yi plus one. Okay, so 
that distance is yi plus one minus y dash or y prime because that's the idealized. What we're going to do is we're defining this error or let epsilon be the distance from the east pixel to the idealized line minus the difference between the northeast pixel. And we get this expression. Now, this basically tells us when um, epsilon is negative, we should choose this pixel. Because okay, when epsilon is negative, it means DE is less than DNE. Else, when epsilon is positive, we should go up a pixel. So we calculate the error, or in a minute I'll show you how to do that. So we calculate whatever epsilon is. We don't compare, or we, we're not interested in the value of epsilon, we're interested in whether it's positive or negative. Okay, if it's negative, we illuminate the east pixel. If it's positive, we illuminate the northeast pixel. Okay, so let's have a look at determining what that value of epsilon is. And we're going back to the Cartesian equation of a straight line, which we saw this morning. Okay, and assuming that this pixel has been eliminated, the x i y i is our current values of x and y. Okay, that's the Cartesian equation of the idealized line. This is the error. So two times y dash minus two y i minus one. So y dash is just this right hand side here. X dash, we know what it is. Okay, so if I go back the slide, okay, there's my x i. I know the x coordinate at this point. So that's just x i plus one because I'm going across one pixel. So that's why it's x i plus one here. So that's delta y over delta x multiplied by your x coordinate plus whatever c is. That's going to disappear. C cancel that in there. Okay, uh, minus one. Okay, we multiply all this out. We get this long uh, sort of string here. If you have a look at this, what we got? We got x i. That's your, your current illuminated pixel. Delta y. That's the change between the start and end point of your line, so in the, in the vertical direction. So you got your start, your line joins two points, what's the, the difference in the y coordinate? That's delta y. Uh, keep going along here, 2 delta y. 2 times y i, so that's your current y pixel coordinate. And c. C will disappear in a minute, so I'm not bothered by that. Okay. Um, this is a, a multiply throughout by delta x here, just to get rid of the fraction. So this is actually delta x times epsilon, but because I'm not interested in what the value of the epsilon is, I'm only interested in the sign, I'm just going to say, well, let epsilon x, y be the error, or be whatever that right-hand side is. Okay, so this is the error function. That's the error between the pixel and the idealized line. What we want is we want a change in the error. We don't want to have to calculate this for every pixel. What we want is to calculate it for the first pixel, and then just add something onto it. It's a lot cheaper, it's a lot easier computationally just to add something on to a number than it is to recalculate that each time. So what we do is we look at what's the change in error from one pixel to the next. Okay. So this change in error is simply the error at the pixel to the right minus the error at our current pixel. Notice here this y sub, uh, subscript i plus 1. This isn't why I add 1 to it. This is y subscript i plus 1. What this means is I don't know yet what that value is. It's a choice between those two. Let's just go back a few slides. Okay. It could be that one or it could be that one. I don't know yet. I know xi, yi there. I know what xi plus one is, but I don't know what the next y coordinate is. Okay. 
So what I've done here is this is my error function. What I've done is where I have an xi in the error function, I've replaced it by xi plus 1. And where I have a yi, I replaced it by y subscript i plus 1. So that's the red one is the sort of the first, the error, and then the pixel to the right. The blue is the error at the current pixel. And I've just got, essentially, I subtract those two. And a lot of these terms cancel out. You see plus 2 delta y cancels out with that one. Um, we've got minus delta x cancels out with plus delta x. We've got plus 2c delta x cancels out with uh, minus 2c delta x. So I told you they'd cancel out. So we can do quite a lot of cancelling. We just get down to the three terms. Okay, so this is my change in error. So it's 2 times delta y. Minus 2 times y plus 1. Now, I don't know what this is yet. I've got a choice between 2. Then plus 2 times y i delta x. Okay, so we have a choice between 2. So depending on which pixel we've chosen, we'll change our change in error. So this is a change in error. This is what I'm adding on to the error. That will depend upon whether I've chosen the pixel to the east or the pixel to the northeast. If the pixel to the east is chosen, that means the yi plus 1 will just be yi. It means I've just gone, I haven't changed the y coordinate. So if I replace this yi plus 1 there with yi, you can see we just end up with 2 delta y. That means, if I choose the pixel to the east, I just add 2 times delta y to the error. On the other hand, if I went up to the northeast pixel, y subscript i plus 1 is equal to my current y coordinate plus 1, because I've gone up 1. Okay, so do exactly the same. So instead of that there, I replace it by y i plus 1, do a bit cancel out, and we end up with 2 delta y minus 2 delta x. So that is how does the error change depending on what pixel we've chosen. We also need an initial error. So we, now, we know how to change the value of the error, but what error do we start with? Well, we go back to the equation of a straight line. And if I rearrange it, remember y equals mx plus c. If I rearrange it to make c the subject, it's just y minus mx. Okay. And this is the error function for x, y. But notice we have that c value in there. So all I've done is replace this here into place of c, do lots of cancelling out, and we get that. So that's our initial starting error value. Delta x and delta y are known right from the start, because that's just the difference in the endpoints. Okay. okay, so we what we have, just to summarize. Our initial error is that, which we just see. If that error is less than null, we move to the pixel to the east because the pixel to the east was closer to the idealized line. And then we, add, then we add our change in error to the east, which is 2 down to y. If the error was positive, we go up a pixel to the northeast. Then we add delta epsilon northeast, which is 2 delta y minus 2 delta x. These are constant. Okay, so we can calculate these right at the beginning, and then we just add that number each time. And all we're doing is using an if statement to see if the epsilon, if the error, is positive or negative. And all of these are all integers. Okay, we never have to mess about with any um, any, whole, uh, any real numbers. Okay, so here's the algorithm. Um, it looks complicated. Again, in a minute, we'll be going through a step-by-step a step uh, look at this. 
So we, again, we start with our raster array. Remember that's NY by NX by three, with the red, green, blue color. We have start and end coordinates A and B, and we have whatever color we want to illuminate our line using the RGB model. Okay, we start off, X and Y are our initial A coordinates. Uh, we calculate what delta X and delta Y are, and then we calculate the errors. Okay, so there's the initial error, the two changing errors depending on whether we go to the east or to the northeast. And similar to the DDA algorithm, we loop for our X coordinates, illuminate the pixel at X, Y. Now X and Y are always going to be integers. We don't have to do that rounding. We have a look at the error. Now if the error is negative, it means we go to the east. Okay, and then we add our change in error um, to the east. Else, if it was positive, we go to the northeast and we add delta epsilon e, and we also add one to y. And of course, don't forget, we're moving one along the x coordinate each time. That's sort of pseudo code, that sort of simplified computer code. If you prefer, this is the flow chart. So you can follow this down. So from the start, you round your A and B, just to make sure you're dealing with integers. You initialize all your values, <coughs> and then you go to the decision block. If X is less than BX, so in other words, we haven't finished yet, illuminate, and then we have another decision block. Is the error negative? If it is, we change the error and add one to X. Uh, if it's positive, we change the error, add one to Y, and then we go as well, add one to X. Okay, so that's Gresham's algorithm. Hasn't been improved upon it. That's invented in the sort of mid to late 60s, and it's still the one which is in use. And there's the output. Okay, I've uh, coded that up in MATLAB, uh, and you can see in the app that it's exactly the same as the DDA which we saw earlier. Okay, um, let's have a look at the next activity. Right, so if you turn three of that activity, you can see you've got exactly the same raster. Anybody not got? Everyone got this? <laughs> okay, we've got the same raster as before, but this time we use a pressure. Okay, so step through. Okay. So the first thing we do is calculate de delta x. Okay, so for the first one, delta x. That's just going to be 9, isn't it? And delta y, which is 6. So the initial error is going to be... Now I've got the um, the slide from the algorithm, so I'm not. I don't t tend to remember these. It's two delta y minus delta x. So it's two times six minus delta x, which is nine. So our initial error is three. So that's my attempt to draw an epsilon. So it's two times delta x. Uh, sorry, two times delta y, which is six minus nine, which gives us three. Okay, we might as well calculate what the change in errors are. So the change in error, if we go to the east, is just 2 delta y. So that's going to be 12. And the change in error, if we go to the northeast, is 2 delta y minus delta x. So 2 delta y x minus 2 delta x. Which is nine, so it's going to be minus six. Notice all whole numbers, we're not having to deal with any fractions or decimals. 
Okay, so that's our sort of initial calculations. Right, so our first x is 1, y is 1. So first thing we do, shade in the pixel at 1, 1. Now the current error is 3, which is greater than 0. So that means we go up to the northeast pixel. So the error is greater than 0, so therefore go to the northeast. Okay, so the new error is going to be epsilon plus the error to the northeast. Now, error to the northeast was minus 6. So it obviously gives us minus 3. On the next step around, we've added 1 to x, and we decided to go to northeast. So I've gone up 1 for y. So I'm going to shade in 2, 2. Now the error is minus 3, which obviously is negative, so therefore we go to the east. And if we update the error, our current error was minus 3, but this time we've got to add our change in error if we went to the east, so that's plus 12. Therefore, it's now nine. <coughs> no messing about with any fractions this time. It's just whole numbers, and all I'm doing is adding whole numbers to another whole number. That's as hard as it gets. Okay, well, we decided to go to the east. So x is equal to three, y is remains unchanged. So we were at that pixel, we've just gone across. So the epsilon is now 9, which is positive. So that, so that means, oh, sorry, I didn't shade it in. There's 3, 2. So because the error is positive, we now go to the northeast. And we've got to update our error accordingly. Uh, so we add our error to the northeast, which is minus 6. So our error becomes three. That all making sense? Just stepping through. Right, so if we go to the northeast from three two, we're at four three. Which is that one. Okay, the error was three, so that's positive. So this means we go to the northeast again. Okay, and if we went to the northeast, we have to add the error, the change in error to the northeast, which is minus six. And you start, hopefully, you're starting to see we're starting to repeat our errors. Okay, so if we went to the northeast, we're at five and four. This one, our error was minus three, which is negative. So we go to the east, and because we go to the east, we add 12 to our error. And again, we're back to nine, and the error is just going to cycle nine, three, minus three, nine. Okay. So our next pixel is at six, uh, four, because we've gone to the east. We've just gone across. And update, uh, sorry, the error is positive. So we go to the northeast. And we update the error by adding the, uh, the change in error to the northeast. Uh, so we're now at seven five. Uh, 
Oops, so three is greater than zero. Again, go to the northeast. Okay, so if we go to the northeast, that's eight six. That one. Area is this time negative. So that means we go to the east. And we add 12 to minus 3, so we're back to 9. So you can start to see the errors starting to repeat themselves. I say the errors, the values are epsilon. Errors sort of in, errors sort of insinuate you've done something wrong, which we haven't. Okay, so we're at 9 and 7. I'll tell you what, hang on. Go to, oh, sorry, nine and six. I thought I'd done wrong then. So nine is six there. Error is nine, which is greater than naught. So we go to the northeast. And we're at 10, seven, and we stop there. Because we're finished. That's question of the algorithm. So during all that, what did we have to do? We had to decide whether a number was positive or negative. To be honest, it's quite easy. Depending on whether it was positive or negative, we had to add either 12 or minus 6 to our error each time. And then that allows us to cycle through, make the decision, which pixel do we illuminate? And you can see we draw on our straight line, which is the same as the ones from this morning, um, using computational little effort. It's a bit harder to understand the actual algorithm, but the actual computation is quite easy. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, right, I'm going to just put up some MATLAB code now for you. I know you love looking at MATLAB code. Uh, oh, where's it gone? There we are. Okay. This uh, MATLAB code, which is called, uh, called Breshnum.m, this is available on Moodle, and you'll need it for assignment eight. So this is the one I've asked you to download and use. Okay, so I just taught you through this. This is a function. So, do you know the difference between functions and m-files? m-files are just a series of MATLAB commands, and if you can put a load of commands together, you can run them, and when you're running them, you can actually see them, what all the values are. Functions are like little black boxes. You give it some input, it'll do something, and then it'll output something. So this is a function. So I said, okay, I've called my function Bresheneau, Okay. The inputs are my raster array, which is your n y by n x by 3 array. A and B are start and end points, so these will be two. Uh, a would have two coordinates and B would have two coordinates. And color is the color of which I want my line to be drawn. And what this does, those are the inputs, it outputs the same raster array with that line drawn onto it. Uh, if we step through this, as you can see, oh, this is a bit sensitive, but there's my initialize all of my xy. Okay, so this is stepping through the algorithm. I start at point A, my x and y values. dx and dy are my delta x and delta y. Okay. Initialize the initial error. I've used e rather than epsilon. Uh, the change in error, if we go to the east, it's just two times delta y. The change in error as we go to the northeast is two delta y minus two delta x. Okay, so in MATLAB, this is all we had to do. The so while the x coordinate is less than the bx or the x coordinate for b, illuminate, illuminate the pixel. That should be an m there. 
x, at x and y. Notice it's y then x. Okay, because remember, uh, MATLAB uses standard matrix indexing, so you go down and then across. So I've got y then x. Okay. The reason why there's a colon there is because it's a 3D array. You've got y, then x, but then you've got three layers of three layers of depth. So whatever your colour was, that should be a three by one um, array. And then you choose between them. So is the error negative? If it is, add the change in error uh, delta e to the east. If it isn't, add the change in error if you went to the northeast, then add one to y and add one to x. Okay, so that's essentially that's done for you. That's already on Moodle. You don't have, but you do have to change that, but that will work in certain situations. How do you get it to work? Well, you write another function. Now, with functions, what you can do is you can put multiple functions in the same file. So you can see here, I've got one function called raster, rastering lines. Okay, and I've got, it, within it, I've, got, I've essentially copied and pasted that Breshnan.n function at the bottom. And this sort of line here is just what I do, just to sort of make it clear, but I've got an end of one function, start of another. Okay, so in this, just to show you, oops. Okay, first thing I've done is initialize a raster array. Now this is a 100 pixel by 100 pixel array. That's my NX, sorry, MY. That's my NX, and that's the three for the three RGB layers. I defined the start and end points, so I wanted my line to start at 10, 10, 10, and end at 90, 70. And the colour I want, I wanted just a red line, so I've called it 100. Zero, zero. Okay. The way MATLAB deals with RGB is these numbers have got to be between 0 and 1. Okay, so 100 zero, zero is just all red, no green, no blue. If you really want to, if you want snazzy colours, you can sort of randomize that if you want. That will give you sort of a random color. One of six, 16,667,000 colors. Okay, then I call that Breshnan function. As you can see this one down here. And then I plot it. So the image command followed by Rasta just plots that image. Okay. This command here, jet, set GCA y direction normal. Now, raster arrays, have their um, origins at the top left. That's just because of that's how pixel arrays work in, in sort of electrical engineering. Now in mathematics we tend to have the origin at the bottom left. So this one just flips your whiteboard. It's not totally necessary. Okay. And then X label, Y label in SHG is show gra graphic. Okay. So if I run that you can see that's the expression of algorithm on 100 by 100, and it's going to be that line. Notice that my y-axis has the origin at the bottom left. That's because I had this command here. Okay, if I remove that command, you can see it's got the origin at the top right, and everything goes wrong. So it assumes you got the origin at the top top left, unless you sort of stay over otherwise. Okay, and that's sort of that's essentially the pass mark for assignment A. Okay, you've got to decide where those that P1 is and where that P2 is, as we looked at this morning. Invoke this thing, draw that line, boom, there's a pass mark. I don't want you to get pass, I want you all to get the uh, to get the whole pentagram in. Great. Okay, uh, next set we're going to look at is I've chosen these sort of lines very carefully, and I've chosen them so that they have a slope which is less, the gradient is less than one because they work. We do have a slight problem when the gradient of the slope is outside of that range. And that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, so all the examples we've looked at, okay, what we have 
our slope, which is the range zero to one. Now, obviously, we want to be able to draw a line in any direction, because there's no point just having a program which will only draw a line in that direction. Now, the other directions we have to consider are one where the gradient is greater than one, which we saw this morning gives us problems. Um, got a negative gradient, so gradient less than minus one. So that's any sort. Of, this is referred to a steep positive line. That's a steep negative line because it's got a negative gradient. Um, but over in that direction, so that's a gradient between minus one and zero. And we keep going around. And we have eight cases to consider. So we've got eight cases to consider. But notice, for example, this region here, which gave us no problems, has the same range of M as this, the opposite region down there. Steep positive line here gives us the same M as that steep positive line. So we can cut down on the amount of special cases we have to consider by only looking at this right hand part. An easy way, to, very, very easy to do that, is we simply switch the um, end coordinates. Okay. So, for example, if I had a line going from here down to here, if I swap the coordinates, that's the same as drawing that line. Okay. So, for example, that line which starts at A and goes up to B, which is going from right to left because AX is bigger than BX. I say, okay, I'm going to say A is B and B is A. And that gives me the line going from there down to there. So what that means is anything on the left-hand side, I can easily do on the right-hand side. But that still gives me four regions to consider. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to do. We need to swap our a and B if we're drawing from right to left. So we now got this problem. Now when we use a DDA, and we saw that this morning, okay, we start to see sort of holes in our lines. Okay, so steep lines, when the gradient is greater than one, we see holes. This is the reason. Okay, so what went wrong? We were using the X as the driving axis. So if we have this steep line, we've shaded in that pixel, move one pixel to the right, okay, now we've got shaded that pixel. Okay, so we've got that gap. If we have chosen Y as a driving axis, so we shade that pixel, move one pixel up, we shade that one because it's closest to the line, move one pixel up, and we shade that pixel. So quite simply, if we have a steep line using the DDA algorithm, you just use Y as a driving axis, not X. So you have a choice. If delta X is greater than delta Y, you go horizontal. If delta X is less than delta Y, you go vertical. We have a slight change to our um, to our method. Okay, this is our algorithm. This is the normal one. This is the one with X as a driving axis. So we just add 1 to x and then add m to y. If we chose a y as a driving axis, we add 1 to y, we add 1 over m to x, because we flipped it. Also, if we're going downhill, instead of adding 1 to y, we have to subtract 1 from y. Instead of adding 1 over m, we subtract 1 over m. So we've got three cases to consider. And if you look at the the uh, flow diagram it looks a lot more complicated now. This is for drawing lines in any direction. Okay, so we start off as normal. Are we drawing from left to right? Oh, sorry, are we drawing from right to left? If we are, we have to swap A and B. And then we've got three cases. And then you deal with those three cases. And they are. It looks complicated, but it's not really. I'm not going to dwell on that too much because that's not in your assignment. What is in your assignment is the modified regression algorithm. Okay, so 
Resonant algorithm, the first thing we're going to deal with is negative slopes. Okay, because we're always going to the east or to the northeast. Well, during negative slope requires a choice, um, sorry, during positive <coughs> slope, the choice between east and the northeast, during negative slope is the choice between the east and the southeast. Okay, uh, if we do the derivation before, you can see that's our change in errors. That is very similar to our positive slopes. Compare these two, the only difference is the sign of the delta y. For a positive slope, delta y is positive. For a negative slope, delta y is negative. So all you have to do is change that sign. Okay, so this is the modifications we have to do to the Brescian's algorithm. Um, if bx minus ax is less than by minus ay, what we do is we swap the x and y coordinates around. So for now, what we do is we say, okay, our a cord, our ax coordinate is now our ay coordinate, and our ay coordinate is now our ax coordinate, and do the same with b. And we we set steep, which is a flag. A flag in programming is something just to keep track of. We've done something. I'm flagging that up. We we swap the coordinates. So I've called the flag steep. So if it's a steep line, I set the flag to 1. If it's not a steep line, I set the flag to 0. If we're drawing from uh, right to left, swap A and B. If we're drawing downhill, if we're going downhill, we set delta Y to be minus delta Y. And this Y ink is whether I'm going up or down. So when y inc is 1, we're going to the northeast pixel, so I'm incrementing y by 1. But if we're going downhill, I'm incrementing y by minus 1. So we go through the normal process of brushing in. When we illuminate the pixel, we check to see whether we've got a steep line or not. If we haven't, we illuminate x and y. If we have, we illuminate y and x. And when updating the y coordinate, instead of y plus 1, you go y plus y increment, because the increment could either be minus 1 or plus 1. This is a very summarized version. See the lecture notes in more detail. So, what you're going to have to do in assignment 8 is change that question.m to make these changes. I think it's easier, it's not on there. If you have a look in the notes, if I can find it now. Personally, I think I find it easier to look at the flow diagram. Where am I? Yeah. It may look ghastly on page 76. This may look really, really horrible and scary. It's not. Whenever you have a decision block, you know you've got an if statement in, in MATLAB. So you do this, there's an if statement. If it's correct, do that, else, uh, or just carry on. Uh, there's another st if statement. If you do that, else, do something else, carry on. So every sort of track, every um, diamond is an if statement. This one here is a while loop. That's the normal. That may look really, really scary. It's not that difficult. If you get the code, if you get what you're trying to do, uh, you can sort of go uh, together. And of course, I'll be on hand in the uh, in the labs to give you give you help on that. Okay, and what I've done here is I've kept my A point at uh, 50 50. And I've just rotated the B point all the way around just to check whether it works in all eight sort of octants. And you can see it works. We have got a bit of a sort of a block in here. That's just because we've used quite a low res. Can't help that. Okay, okay. I don't want to talk about circle um, symmetry just yet. That's for the last lecture. Just to revisit the, if I can find the. 
just a quick revisit of the assignment eight. Now, I do appreciate these assignments. I'm, I'm saying, oh, you can now do this one, you can now do that one. They will sort of, um, the pace of what I cover the assignments in will, will go down a bit. Okay, so that's the assignment eight. Um, in the lecture this morning, I just showed you how to calculate the positions P1 to P5. Okay, and I said you can do P1 to P2, well, you can do that. Because that's essentially downloading Bresham.m, calculate what P1 is, calculate what P2 is, and then draw that line. And I showed you that code um, earlier on. The merit one, which is worth 7 out of 10, is editing that Bresham.m. So you can also do, for example, P4 to P5, or do all these lines, lines in any direction. So to get a merit, I want to see the star drawn on that raster which would mean editing your Gresham.m and um, modifying it using how I just said, that, um, that flow chart on page 76. Uh, distinction is drawing the circle, which we'll look at in an hour. Any questions? No, everyone got it? Okay. I do stress, so in the labs, I am there to help you, so if you do need any help, Please call me over. And I'll see you at uh, four, four o'clock, the last lecture.